and welcome to the second episode of AppDrag Academy. I am Mike Saba and today we're going to learn how to create an authentication system by setting up the database, the APIs, and the front end. So let's begin. I'm going to create a new project. And once again, we're going to begin by developing the backend first. So let's go ahead and create our users table. Add in the columns we're going to need. We have first name, last name, email, phone number, a password. This time it's going to be of type password. a token of type text, and a last update of type date time. I'm going to manually add a sample user. Now that the table is set, let's move on to the APIs. I'm going to add a folder so my authentication APIs remain together. We're going to begin with the login function, which will be a visual SQL function. First thing to make sure is that we're going to choose the right table to select from. The method will be post, and we enter our parameters. Those are going to be email and password. Put in an example. The output columns will give us in response only the columns we select, but we'll just leave that blank. Then we plug in our conditions. So that's going to be where email is equal to the email parameter and the password is equal to the password parameter. Let's save and try and the result we get is an object containing our user. Perfect. Now the next API we're going to write is called check token and will be almost identical. Again, we're going to choose the visual select and in the parameters add in the email. So let's put the one I entered earlier and the token with the example of that same user. Now for the conditions, we're going to check that the email is equal to the email parameter and the token is equal to the token parameter. Save and try. And once again, we have the same object in response. So this concludes the backend side of our project and we move on to the front end. We're going to take this button and link it to our form. But before we do anything, let's first create the couple of pages that we'll need. Click on new page. The first one we're going to create is going to be the client area to which we will redirect to once our user has logged in. And the second will be for our form. We're also going to hide this page from the menu as we don't need it to be displayed. For the sake of aesthetics, I'm going to add in a pre-made section and run a little time lapse of styling and insertion of the inputs. And there we go. Now let's assign the API to this button. So action, cloud backend, enable trigger, select the login API, allocate the parameters to the sources, and finally execute JavaScript. So here's where we write some simple logic based on the response we got from the back. We create a variable called row, which will parse the JSON containing a table array of rows. If our response has no rows, that means no one matches the email and password entered. Therefore, alert that the email or password is incorrect. Else, and this means that there is a user in the table, we set the user's email and token in his browser's local storage by selecting the email attribute of the row in position zero, and the same for the token. Once they're stored, we can redirect our user to the client area page. Wonderful, hit save and save one more time. Now let's go back to our home page. Double click into this button, change the content to login, link it to the login page.
Save and Preview. And now we fill out the form. Let's put in a wrong password just to see the error handling. And there's our alert. Let's put in the correct password. And here we are redirected to our client area. Let's go back to the home for a minute and open the browser's local storage. So here's my email and token. I'm going to delete them and try accessing the client area page from the menu. And as you can see, I do have access, which is wrong, but that's because it isn't protected. How do we protect it? Let's find out. We're going to open the client area page and I'm going to select an element called source code. And insert a piece of jQuery right at the top of the page. In here, we're first off going to verify if the local storage even has anything. So we're going to create variables that'll get the values of email and token, and we begin. So if the email or token is either an empty string or null, then redirect to the login page. However, if they do contain information, we enter the else statement that will verify if the credentials match our user. So let's visit our backend for a minute. If we open the check token API, there's a carrot at the top that'll give you some options. One of them is the API documentation where I could test it out and see what returns. So if the credentials are correct, I get the user's object. But if not, I get an empty table. What I also get is my API in a variety of different languages. We'll select jQuery and copy the code. Back to the front end, I'm quite simply going to paste it in the else clause. Now let's replace these values for our variables and remove these two lines as they're not needed here. And after the Ajax call, we check to see what was returned. So let's parse the JSON as a row. And if there are no rows, once again we redirect to the login page. Save and save. Go back to home and preview. Now if we click the client area from the menu and we're not logged in, we're redirected to the login page. If I log in successfully, I'm redirected to the client area. Open the local storage. Let's just modify the token a little. Go back home and try accessing the client area. And there we are once again, redirected to the login page. That wraps up this episode of AppDrag Academy. In the next episode, we're going to create a new form allowing a new user to register. And in a future episode, we're going to recreate the login API in order to generate a new token every time our user logs in.